This is the Mouse Creek Valley near Cleveland, Tennessee, selected by the Southeastern Fox Hunters Association as the running grounds for the 22nd annual field trials. These rolling hills and verdant forests have offered a perfect setting for fox hunting through many generations. Cleveland is located in the heart of the Great Tennessee Valley and is the gateway to the beautiful Cherokee National Forest. Bradley County was established February 10, 1836. Cleveland, the county seat, has a population of 20,000 friendly people who welcome the fox hunters and their hounds. The Cherokee Hotel, headquarters for the hunters, is located on lands bought from the Cherokee Indians by the historical Coy Purchase. Hunters are greeted by smiles of familiar faces and officials who always attend the big event. Each hunter programs and instruction sheets for the four-day trials at the information desk. Many of these fox chasing enthusiasts are not strangers to the hotel management. Reservations are made far in advance of their arrival. This modern stock barn is used to house the horses and dogs for the southeastern hunt. Several hundred hounds can be kenneled. A one-way drive is used to handle traffic on opening day. Well, this fellow seems to have a truckload of fox hounds. Say, fella, that's a nice arrangement you have for hauling dogs. Let's have a look at your pack. Here they come. What, you mean there's more? Many clever arrangements are devised to carry the hounds. These hunters approach the kennels to register and get their hounds numbered for the chase. Large numbers are placed on the dogs and judges score them in the hunt by numbers only. When the hunt is over, the master of hounds will check the winning number to determine the owner. Waterproof paint must be used to keep the hound from losing his number in the rain or when swimming lakes and streams. Well, old fellow, every dog has his day, and this may be yours. Cleveland's mayor greets the hunters at the bench show. The southeastern event is officially underway. The welcome address is given by the president of the Cleveland Chamber of Commerce which sponsors the event jointly with the Bradley Fox and Coon Hunters Association, and the show starts. First on the program, the natural carriage class. The hounds are paraded around, and the judge looks them over from the center of the ring. Ten winners are to be picked from this large class, the ringmaster keeps the hounds moving. The judge places the winners on show benches numbered from one to 10. These benches are small platforms made especially for this purpose. The hound finishing on number one bench is the winner of the class. 10 derby hounds have been selected for the next class. These dogs are judged for confirmation and other points according to national fox hunting rules. The bench show judge shifts the hounds until satisfied that the best dog is on number one bench. Well, the spectators say it's okay. Note now the white hound in 10th place being moved to number eight bench in the derby female class. He looks very good and has moved up again to fifth place. This dog has the appearance of a fine foxhound. And 
Even small children like the show listen with interest as it's explained. lady seems to be going places, and from fifth place, she's now on bench number three. Well, here we go again. Starting in tenth place, she's moved rapidly to second place. Take a look at this. She's still moving to the front and takes number one bench to win the class. The best derby female. Color, however, is not an important factor in judging foxhounds. And everybody is happy as this beautiful queen of the class takes first prize. calmly receives the Blue Ribbon Award. This means that she'll be brought back to compete with other winners for Best in Show. The finer points of judging hounds will be noticed as the judge approaches. These dogs, more than two years old, are classed as all-age dogs. Even the eyes and ears are closely checked in choosing the winner. A deep chest and straight position of legs and feet are judged in selecting the bench winners. These are all age female hounds. They're fully developed and should be thoroughly trained for running fox. The fox hound has a friendly and affectionate nature. The owner is careful to have the dog stand high on its toes, with feet well placed. The many tedious hours spent in training them for the show are seen in almost perfect behavior when placed on the bench. The judge moves up and down constantly, changing the dogs from one bench to another until all are in final position. This hound seems to be just a little nervous from the organ music, and so the judge places her ears back into natural position. This beautiful hound continues to hold the number one bench, Competition's keen. The judge takes another overall look. The anxious owner cooperates splendidly. The judge takes a final look at number two before saying, no, that's the way it ought to be. You're the owner and here's your ribbon, sir. As the winner is recorded, proceedings are interrupted for an announcement. Hounds will be cast at dawn. Now the grand finale. The class winners, all great dogs, are judged for best in show. The bench champion is a derby dog from Terre Haute, Indiana, and the best opposite sex from Abingdon, Virginia. And so ends the bench show with two great champions. And come dawn, a hunting we will go. Hunters gather at daybreak for the first cast. Three hundred and two hounds from twelve states were entered. Owners give each dog's number to the master of hounds before release. Careful now. Unsnap your leash. Dropping of the hat signals to the hunters to let them go. Hey. 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 
Judges are mounted and follow the cast. Others are stationed zones ahead of the hounds. Hurry up there, boy. Hunters and spectators, undaunted by the early drizzle, gather along fences hoping to hear the opening bay of hounds on trail. I'm Oscar. I come from a long line of foxes. I'm little, but they can't catch me. A fox chase without a yarn. Well, it just couldn't be. Hounds scatter in search of a trail. The dogs are headed in your direction, fellow. Look out now. Fox scent is carried by wind. And these hounds have located the direction of the trail. Hunters who have entered dogs in the trials often get away from the crowd to listen. This hound has found the trail and it won't be long now. Dogs are good hunters and have already been scored by two judges. Hounds are scored for hunting, trailing, speed and drive, and endurance. That's my daddy they're after. Me and him smart. We're foxy. They can't catch us. Hounds are capable of going three and four days without food. On many field trials, dogs are lost and aren't located for several days. Statistics show the walker breed of hound can hunt for four days without food and still have the endurance to chase a red fox to his den. The hounds can be heard driving a fox in the distant hills along Chickamauga Lake. These dogs are making their way to the pack. 30 minutes later, the fox breaks into the open. The hounds are close, but not for long. Here in slow motion, he drops out of sight and for more than an hour gives chase before reaching his den. Back the next morning for the second cast, the ranks are thinned with 28 hounds scratched. Some for babbling or barking out of place, and some for running rabbits. This cast is shown in slow motion. Note the long, free stride of the hounds as they glide with effortless grace over the ground. Judges move fast to reach cover where fox are most likely to be found. Some of the hunters move to the hill crest for a better view of hounds at work and hoping to see the fox. Watch out, Pep. They're after you again. Me? Huh. I'm smarter than anybody's little fox hound. Hunters watch and listen as the hounds jump the fox at close range. This race contributes more scores for speed and drive than any other during the hunt. There won't
won't be no more today. He's headed straight for that uh, den. Evenings are highlighted with entertainment honoring celebrities. Banquets and dinner parties are given. The Fox Hunter Barn Dance is one of the biggest events of the hunt. Not all of them dance, however, but all attend and enjoy the fun. The traditional dances are carried out once again, and old-fashioned sets are called. This colorful event is reminiscent of the square dance of the Tennessee Pioneers. Having a good time, fella? State hunters enjoy mountain music. The most famous square dance bands play for this annual event. Southeastern president and Kentucky's old-time fox hunter continue to rehash the last race. The barn dance is over at midnight, the witching hour. The hunters must be ready at dawn for the last cast, so back to the hunt. The master of hounds has complete authority over dogs and judges. Some of these hounds have built up nice scores during the first two days of the hunt. The winning hound is determined in a judge's meeting on the highest general average score. The president of the National Fox Hunters Association tells the Southeastern president and others the future holds great possibilities for young boys. They're the conservationists of tomorrow. Hot coffee and sandwiches are available on the casting ground at all times. Time is called, the hunt is over. The hounds cannot be stopped immediately, and it's sometimes hours and even days before they're all brought in. This one escapes from the lost dog trailer. The younger boys enjoy wrestling with large hounds to get them in after the hunt. The fox eluded the hounds, but was chased for some time after the hunt was called off. Back at the hotel, the hunters begin to assemble 
while the judges are in private session to pick the winner. Handsome trophies await the winners. This is an amateur sport, and no other prizes are given. These fellas check the final scores. Number 205, the Southeastern Champion, a three-year-old walker hound from Cleveland, Tennessee. And once again, the victory is the sly old fox is at home in the forest.